Today we're going to go over how to find arc length. The essential question is how could knowing how to find arc length be useful? So first we need to go over exactly what arc length is and I'm going to show you an example of a circle. So here we have a circle and the way that you name a circle is whatever the center of that circle is. So this circle is called circle D is the name of that circle and that is exactly how you would name it. It would be a circle with a dot in the middle and then the letter by it. So the name of that circle is circle D. And so what we're going to do is um, we're actually going to be finding the length of a portion of the circumference. So if we wanted to know how long this piece of the circle is instead of the entire piece. Um, and it is fairly simple as long as you know how to cross multiply and as long as you know how to find the circumference, so it'll be exceedingly easy for you. Um, so the first thing that you always have to know is it's always part over whole. Um, always, always with these, they're always part over whole for both arc length and 10-2, which is sector area. And um, for this part, we're going to look at how the angles of the circle for the part of the circle over the whole circle are related to the circumference of part of the circle over the whole circle. So you kind of look at it like this. It's going to be kind of like a table and all the problems will be set up this way. Um, so we're going to be looking for part of the angle. So what basically whatever this angle measure is and we're going to call it this is called theta. It's a circle with a little swoop in the middle of it. Um, and all that is is just a variable name for an angle. Just like we use x to mean numbers all the time, um, theta is kind of the go-to variable to um, define an angle if you don't know what it is. So it's just another type of variable instead of using x. So it's part of the whole circle of the angle of the circle that we're looking for. And we're only looking for this amount of it. So part over the whole entire circle. So the angle for the whole circle, which will always be 360. And then we're going to be looking for the portion of the circumference. So in this case, it's just this green area here. And we're gonna name it X because that's what we name numbers over the circumference. And remember circumference formula is two pi times the radius. And the radius is always the distance from the center to the outside. It could be that one or it could be this one. It could be either one. And that is the radius. Um, the only other thing you need to know is the difference between a minor arc and a major arc. And it's just the way that they're named. So a minor arc example is our green arc. And the way that you would name it is it's either A, B, which typically is how we would name it because it's in alphabetical order, or it could also be B, A, although typically we do alphabetical order. Um, the only other arc is your major arc, and that would be a arc that is bigger than 180, so something like this. And major arcs are always major arc are always named using three letters um, because if you just named it a b you would probably go the short way around so you always name it using three and then the letter on the ends which are a and b or it could also be b and a the only difference is you would want a letter in between them so c for both of them it could be named either and then there is an arc over top that's how you name arcs um, so on your tests and things, you might decide what, what arc you're looking at according to how it's named. So now we're going to do a couple of examples. Here's an example problem. We have a circle. Um, we're shown various um, measures. So this is 57. This is, of course, 90. Um, since this is 57, you could assume that this is 57 because those are vertical angles. They're two lines that cross each other so they would be equal to each other they'd both be 57 um, to figure out this one since this is a diameter it would have to be 180 so you do 180 minus 90 minus this 57 would give you this one 
and this one's also a diameter, so you would do 180 minus 57 to figure out this one. So there are lots of ways that you could figure out all the different angles in here. Um, but for our purposes, we're going to um, look at what we're trying to find. We're trying to find VZ. VZ is right here. And we need to know our angle measure of this one. And remember, since this is 57, so is this one. And then, of course, our radius is the other piece of information that we need, which is right here. So now we can set up our problem. We do angles first, so part angle over the whole angle. My part of my angle is 57 over my entire angle of a circle is 360 is equal to um, x. Our part of the circumference we're looking for is x. And then over the whole circumference, which is 2 pi, and then times your radius, which in this case it is three and I'm color coding just so that you understand where everything came from. Um, our radius is three so that's why it's here. We're looking for this portion of the circumference and we're using this portion of the degrees over all the degrees of a circle which is 360. Now all you do is you cross multiply and solve. So 360 times x is 360x. And you want to multiply this way, um, but in high school, we usually leave our answers in terms of pi. So you're not going to multiply out pi, um, you're just going to leave it as pi like it was a variable. So what that means is you're going to do 57 times 2 times 3, you're not going to do pi. And it's 342, and then you write your pi by it. So you leave it like this. Um, then we still need to solve for x, so you're going to divide both sides by 360. And then you have to reduce this terrible fraction, but your calculator will do it for you. So if you do 342 divided by 360 in your calculator, and then you hit math, enter, enter, it'll reduce that fraction for you so that you don't have to do it. And if you are um, in my pre-IB classes, you must do it this way. You cannot give me a decimal. Um, you're gonna have to give me both the answers. Uh, there is an exact answer, which is where you do math enter enter. So our exact answer would be like this. It would be 342 divided by 360. And it gives you this decimal, but if you press math, enter enter it turns it to a fraction which is 19 over 20 19 over 20 but you also need to leave your pi in your answer so that's my exact answer or my estimated answer would be um, the decimal of that so 19 over 20 and don't forget that you have to multiply times pi and you do need to use the pi button so um, pi is right above this arrow, and yes, I know that my calculators in the classroom have different colors, but they're essentially everything's in the same spot. So um, your pi would be a blue pi instead of yellow, and you would press the second blue button and then hit that same number to get pi. And the reason is, especially if we use big numbers, um, your decimals will be off if you use 3.14. And pi is a never-ending number, you must use pi. So um, I'm just multiplying the 19 over 20 times pi, which is 2.98. And we're going to leave it at 8 because this number is less than 5. And you always go to two decimals, so 2.98. And don't forget your units. In this case, they are inches. So um, the exact number is 19 pi over 20. The estimated number is 2.98 inches. If you're in pre-IB on the test, so my fourth and fifth period, you must give me both of those. Um, my level classes, you could give me either answer would be okay. Um, so our next problem, we're going to find y, x, z. So start from y, go towards x, and we're going to end at z. 
just so that you know this arc could have also been called YWZ or YVZ as well or the vice versa of all of those. You just have to pick a point in between your two endpoints um, for your name. In this case X was just picked um, but it did not have to be X. It could have been W or V as well. Okay so first we need to figure out how many degrees that whole arc is. So since this is 57, this is 57, this is 90, we need to figure out what VW is. So if you remember, this is a diameter. It goes straight from one side to the other through the metal. Um, so all of those added together would be 180. So to figure out this one, you would do 180 minus the 90 that's there and minus the 57 to give you whatever those degrees are. So 180 minus 90 minus 57 is 33 degrees. So to figure out how much the measure of y x z is, you add all those together. So 57 plus 33 plus 90 plus the other 57. So 57 plus 33 plus 90 plus 57 is 237 degrees. So now I can finally do my part of the circle we're looking at, the 237 degrees of it, over my entire circle, which is 360 degrees. We're looking um, for the part of the circumference, which would be x, over the entire circumference, which is 2 pi, and then don't forget my radius, which is still 3, because we're working off the same circle. And then you cross multiply. So after you're done cross multiplying, 237 times 2 times 3 is 1422. Divide both sides by 360 to get it away from your x. And then we need to put this in our calculator. So 1422 divided by 360. You could go ahead and hit math enter enter now if you want to, and it would give it to you immediately. So 79 pi over 20. X is 79 pi over 20. Or, and then you need to multiply that answer times pi, which is 12.41. Twelve point four one what inches and we are done and we're gonna do two additional problems on the back and then we'll be finished here's our next example problem um, so this time we're given a pie chart with some percentages on it and in this case it's a sampling of land and what was found on each of those um, pieces of land so our formula will be very very similar the only difference is instead of the part of the degrees over the whole degrees, we're gonna do the part of the percentage over the whole percentage. So that looks like this. So as you can see, we're gonna set up the problem very, very much the same. Um, so the first problem says, how long is the arc containing everything except for grass? So that means how long is all of this? So we just put it into the problem, but first we need to figure out exactly what our percentage is. So our percentage is the 19% plus the 13% plus the 5, and that's going to be a over all 100%. We're trying to figure out how long that other portion is over our entire circumference, so 2 pi, and our radius is 23 feet. So we cross multiply x times 100 is 100x and then we're gonna have to multiply all of this um, it would be easier if we figured out what exactly our portion of percentage is 19 plus 13 plus 5 is 37 and then 37 times 2 times 23 gives us 1702 and don't forget your pi then divide both sides by 100 left side cancels reduce the right side with math enter enter which comes out to 851 over 50, so 851 pi over 50. Find the estimation of that, which is 
and that is in feet. And that's our answer for our first one. Our second one is asking how long is the arc containing just the grass? So all of this part of my circle. And we already have that percentage at 63 over the entire percentage of anything, which is 100, which is equal to, and we're trying to find out how long that little piece of the arc is. Well, actually, it's a bigger piece over the whole circumference, which is 2 pi times 23. Now we need to cross multiply. And that is 28, 98 whenever you multiply all those. And don't forget your pi. Divide both sides by 100. Left side cancels and reduce your right side for your answer. 1449 over 50, so 1449 pi over 50. And figure out your approximation. 91.04. And this is feet. That's the end of notes. Make sure you go down to the bottom and write your summary.